He is a Christian leader, ministering, ministering to people where they are, be that a street prostitute, someone who's just come out of prison, someone with a drug problem, someone with special needs. He brings the message of Christ to people where they are. It's a very important ministry. He's also on the radio mornings on 1050 AM, weekday mornings. And he's also very involved politically. Do you remember the billboards that said Martin Luther King was a Republican? Well, let me tell you something. I have a theory about politics in America today. There's not really a disagreement over philosophical issues. Americans want less government, less taxes, less regulation, less intrusion. They want to make private decisions with their time and their money. So what liberals have to do, since they're in the distinct minority, is they have to argue that you're a racist because they can't win on the merits. Well, guess what? The only thing worse than being called a racist in America, because all the liberals have is issues of race, is being called an Uncle Tom. And a friend of mine, when I was talking to him about political folks in our community who happens to be black and who happens to be a Democrat, and I try to convert him and it hasn't worked yet, and I mentioned Apostle Claver, and he says, oh, he's an Uncle Tom. You know what an Uncle Tom is? That's a black person who thinks for themselves. You know what an Uncle Tom is? That's a black person who dares to stand up and say, Sheila Jackson Lee doesn't speak for me. I speak for myself. I speak for my family. I speak for my country. I speak for my faith. And it takes a lot of courage for folks to do it. And I hope you'll show your appreciation and listen closely because he has a very interesting perspective and a great way of telling a story. Please give it up for Apostle Claver. Saints and Patriots, make some noise! Somebody give a shout of victory! All right, all right, y'all sit down. I ain't even said nothing yet. All right. Yay, Apostle! Thank you. Well, we don't have much time, and I'm, I'm going to get right to it. Straight no chaser. Y'all know me, right? Yes, sir. And um, I really can't get cranked up unless I start off by reading out of God's Word. I hope no one uh, objects to that. If you do, shake yourself and get over it. I'm going to read from the, uh, the New International Version of the Bible, and I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, to about chapter 7, verse 1. Some of you may have heard me read this before, but I believe that it's a prophetic message that needs to be heard by as many saints and patriots across this country as possible. And God's Word says... Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. When I say no, you say compromise. No? Compromise. No? Compromise. 
When I say no, you say surrender. No? Surrender. No? Surrender. When I say no, you say compromise. No? Compromise. No? Compromise. When I say no, you say surrender. No? Surrender. No? Surrender. What God is telling us here, for those who believe and those who are patriots that recognize this country was founded in covenant with Christ Jesus, so we are not to compromise. Come into union with those who do not believe as we do. When I open up the Bible, and maybe it happens to you as well, I see political parallels. It happens more often than not. And what I say from this passage is that I have nothing in common with a liberal. I have nothing in common with the socialist. Nothing in common with the progressive. Nothing in common with the communist. Nothing in common with the Marxist. And all them other, other evilisms, I have nothing in common with them. Thus, I'm not to be yoked with them. I'm not to compromise with them. I am not to surrender to them. I am to defy them. I am to stand against them and recognize the fact that we do not have anything in common and I wish not to be in union with you. What the Bible says is that in common with them, to work with them, they pull me away from my liberty. Thus, we need a new breed of politician in this day. No, 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 no. Let me rephrase that. Because it is said that politics is the art of compromise. And we don't need compromise anymore. We don't need politicians. We need public servants that will not compromise, that will not surrender, that will not be unequally yoked with someone who we do not have in common with, a liberal, a socialist. Nothing in common, no surrender, no compromise. In 1776, the founders of this nation, men and women both, went up against a tyrant by the name of King George. I don't know how you feel. I don't know what you say. But I say that in this day, we face King George to the 20th power. And when those brave men signed their names to the Declaration of Independence, what they understood without equivocation was that they were signing their lives away. There was a spirit of, give me liberty, give me freedom, give me choice, or give me death. And now, the question I have for you is, the folks that are asking for your vote, even on November the 2nd, do they have that spirit of liberty or death? Are they willing to die to protect your liberty? Are they willing to lose their liberty to protect your liberty? Because if we're going to get this country right side up again, if we're going to defeat King George to the 20th power, we must have people on the ballot and in office that has that spirit that says, even if it means losing my liberty, I will not compromise. I will not surrender. Even if it means taking a bullet, I will not compromise. I will not surrender. Tyranny stops now. We want our freedom and we want it now. No compromise, no surrender. No compromise, no surrender. And I don't care if you have an R behind your name or a D behind your name. If you are a compromiser, if you surrender to tyranny, to liberalism, to socialism, you're not my friend. I have nothing in common with you. You may be eligible to be on the ballot. But in this day and age, to defeat the level of tyranny that we face, you are not qualified to be on the ballot. If you are not willing to bleed and die 
for the liberty of those that are out here today. You're not qualified. Go find something else to do, but you're not ready. See, the, the Bible here in chapter 7, verse 1 of 2 Corinthians says to purify ourselves from all that contaminates the body. To me, socialism is a contaminant. Liberalism is a contaminant. And what we have to do is re-embrace our primary system identify folks who are surrenderers and compromisers. Just read in the Austin American Statesman yesterday that there are state officials, state office holders, with R's behind their name, that have proposed a statewide property tax. Compromiser. Surrenderer. Tyrant. No, we can't get to them in 2010. But just for even mentioning such an idea, they should be run out of office and run out of the state. Here we are, here we are, trying to get rid of property tax in Texas. What are you doing being a tenant of the government anyway? Here you are, you get a mortgage for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, and you pay for that mortgage. Nobody bails you out. When the roof is leaking, you pay for it. When the pipe busts, you pay for it. When the oak tree in the front yard, its roots bust up your driveway, you have to pay for it. But every year, here comes the government collecting this rent called property tax. And here you are in your older years. You've paid faithfully. Lord Jesus forbid something tragically happens and you can't pay that property tax. Who's knocking at the door? You thought it was your property all the time and you wonder about that land grab called TTC. Why are you surprised? The government thinks it's their property anyway. Get rid of the property tax. You are not a tenant of the government. You are not a serf. They are not our landlord. Not in Texas, not this century. You want to get rid of corruption in Washington. You want to get rid of the influence of lobbyists in Washington. Get rid of America's Gestapo. Get rid of America's KGB. Shut down the IRS now. And this Bible says to purify ourselves. I don't care if you're a Republican and you call yourself a conservative, if you're compromising, if you're not in favor of shutting down the tyranny of the IRS, you're not worthy of our vote and we're going to kick you out. If you're not in favor of, of repealing property tax, we're going to kick you out. What have we lost in this nation? The spirit of repeal. How come it took the threat of nationalizing our health care system before our so-called representatives even uttered the word repeal. Where is that spirit? Let me speak to Republicans, candidates and office holders. And those of you who may be Democrats out here. If Republicans want to win our trust, if Republicans want to earn our vote, they must return to the founding principles of this party. They must return and become the party of Lincoln again. The party of Frederick Douglass again. The party of John Langston again. The party of Sojourner Truth again. The party of Booker T. Washington again. The party of Harriet Tubman. They must become the party of emancipation. As they were founded, as Lincoln founded that party, they must be dedicated to freeing the people.